Hello, this is Vampire here to talk about a disturbing trend that I've noticed in the Filipino martial arts. I would say um, when it really, really hit me hard, I, I've noticed this before, but when it really hit me hard was I saw this comment and um, it was on Twitter and this person had posted um, what looked like military people, so two military people dressed in full attire, and they were doing knife drills. And uh, it looked like Filipino martial arts. Maybe it wasn't, but it looked to me like your typical Filipino martial arts drills, partner drills. So they were going at it back and forth, back and forth, with um, at least one person had a knife. I think they both had a knife, and they they were just doing a drill that involved a knife and the person the person's comment is what bothered me okay so the person's comment said even if this has nothing to do with real life I want to be able to do this drill I want to be able to do what they're doing in that clip and that bothers me because that means the person wants to learn it because it looks cool. That is super disturbing to me. And you know, when we start martial arts, you start many times for the wrong reasons. Why? Because your mind doesn't understand what martial arts is. So we get attracted to martial arts for a lot of the the wrong reasons, you know, we, we want to become a hero or, uh, you know, become a badass or whatever, uh, to be able to, uh, you know, kick butt or not take crap from someone or, you know, all these things to be tough or whatever. And, um, so, so we start for those kinds of reasons, which I'm telling you right now is that's the wrong reason to do martial arts. Okay. And you do that. And if you've been training correctly, then you start to understand that it's about becoming a better human being. And, um, you know, for this person to want to look cool, like I said, that is the wrong reason to learn this stuff. Okay. Um, they don't care if it works or not. They don't care if it's practical, if they could use it in real life or not. They don't care about any of that. They just want to be able to do it and look cool. So the message that you're spreading is, hey, look at me. I'm cool. And is not the martial path. And it's toxic. It's actually toxic. Um, you're spreading bad stuff. We don't need more of that in the world today. You know, hey, look at me. I look cool. I have no substance. None of this is usable, but who cares? I look cool. I'm popular. You know, that's, that's not good. Um, that's horrible. And what I'm noticing now in the Filipino martial arts, even more than ever, is that people are doing these partner drills for that exact same reason. So I'm going to say, like, for example, a lot of people doing balinta walk. You're learning these drills that I would put my money that you're not going to be able to use that in a real life situation. Now before, and, and this sounds like I'm attacking the art, I'm attacking the style, and it's I'm not because... I believe that every style has something valuable to offer and I'm, I'm not, I'm not, um, how do you call it? I truly believe that. So in the case of Balintawak, um, I would, if I were to learn that stuff, I would need to play detective and try to figure out how I could use it in a real life situation. And that takes time and energy, period, period. Anybody can do it. So anyone learning Balinta Walk can do it, can do that, what I just said, where you put in the time and energy 
to figure out not just I'm not just talking about learning it I'm talking about learn it you learn it and now you could show it off okay and and that's what I'm talking against is you learn the moves and it's it's just like you know memorizing you know a skill and you do it enough times your body's gonna you know just like a piano someone who's, who can play the piano or guitar or, or what it's a skill it's like anyone can do it if you put in the time but that doesn't mean you can use it that doesn't mean you understand where it fits in in combat and before I thought you know what if you're gonna learn it just to learn it then that's fine that's fine okay you learn it and that's how the art spreads there's like let's say I don't know a hundred people okay let's say a class a classroom right let's say there's 20 people in the class okay so out of the 20 people maybe oh man I don't know let let's say three people out of the 20 can actually use it for whatever reason maybe they're tough as nails maybe they have another style that that they've studied um, but for whatever reason they could pull it off maybe they're physically just a beast or they're you know very very determined they have the qualities of a fighter they have the qualities of a killer they have a quality to make to make it happen you know of like a Navy SEAL special forces they, they can pull it off right but the other 17 people in that class they won't be able to use it they are all they are is just notes that's getting passed on from one generation to the next so hopefully they can do it well and then they'll teach it to the next generation and hopefully they could teach it well so the next generation can do it well and it just gets passed on so that that is a traditional martial arts it's it continues the tradition of it being passed down from one generation to the next but those people don't know how to use it if that makes sense right so within the group there are I I've said it before there are some that are gonna be good teachers there are some that are um, gonna be very very good at replicating what what the instructor is doing so they're like the model student um, and then there's others that innovate there are others that they can fight okay they go out and they use it um, so there are different types of people within the class classroom okay and at the end of the day I know not everyone here is gonna become a fighter is not gonna become a warrior you know we're like I'm a normal person but I want to be able to use it for self-defense and in order for that to happen I don't care what style it is you need to do the figuring out and making it fit you so that you can go use it that you can you not your instructor not your fellow classmates not the reputation of the art I'm talking about you you know and so for that to happen you got to go become detective and try to figure out how can I make this work for me you need to put in that time and what I see with most of those people online Instagram Twitter YouTube TikTok I'm pretty sure most of those people don't do that they're just happy doing the drill and then showing it off so this goes back to that person that saw the drill it wasn't Balintawak but saw that knife drill that I, I explained the military guys doing the knife drill and they were like I don't care if this isn't if this is not realistic I want to learn it because it's cool it so that's why to me this is the same problem and this is toxic so we need to move away from that okay and I don't care what drill you choose personally it could be Balintawak okay that's fine me personally you know I I chose the force to force block drill it wasn't a drill I made it into a drill and that that for me is my bread and butter okay but it has limitations I'll be the first to admit 
And my students know that too. They, they know the limitations of, of that drill. Um, once you start going into medium range, it's not happening, you know, and I will never lie about that. Okay. I, I said before, um, once you start getting closer, it's easily a 60 to 70% failure rate, very high or more, you know, the, it starts to increase dramatically the closer you start getting. So it is a long range partner drill. But understanding that, really, really understanding that and being able to keep it in long range will be make things very usable for you. And I, you're going to have a very good chance of pulling it off if you practice it. But I, I'm not saying you need to practice it for a million hours for 10 years. No, but I, I'm saying that if you follow that, that drill and you apply it to real life, you're going to have a very good chance of of being able to to use it in real life and use it to protect yourself. And if you fail in real life, then it's when you are not able to follow those rules. You're not, you're no longer in um, long range. Okay. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, I, I am so disheartened by this. And look, I, I just brought up Balinta Walk. There's other, other styles. Um, Plenty of other Filipino martial arts style. I think every Filipino martial arts style is guilty of this. Okay. A lot of the practitioner, it's it's not the style's problem. Because the style is a library and it offers you this knowledge. So it's what are you gonna do with the knowledge? Okay. If you just take awesome notes, it's 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 almost like, I mean, even if you take photocopy the book perfectly that's all you're doing okay you have to go apply it and then so you get the book and then you go try it in real life and then now you have completely new set of notes you know it's now it should be like a journal where you're going i tried this i tried that against this guy who was heavier this guy was a faster person this guy was a skilled person you know this guy was a counter fighter you know, this dude gave me a surprise attack or, or whatever. You need to be writing that down and then there's different answers for all that. Um, that needs to be jotted down. And those are new notes. Those aren't going to be in, in that, you know. Um, and it once again, I'm not attacking the style. There, there's nothing wrong with the style other than the people training in the wrong way okay and in the wrong way look if you're gonna do it just for because it looks cool then admit it and say it but even then I think people just they just don't they they don't want to believe that so they'll ignore that so that's why I think it's toxic to you shouldn't be training then you know it's it's better off that you don't because you're spreading the wrong things uh, this is this should not be about ego it should not be about looking cool or you know those are all bad wrong things so you know the training there is supposed to be for saving lives okay and you need to be training with that in mind okay I'm, I'm not saying that you're gonna be able to do that right away from the beginning from the get-go no but that should be your goal and you should be aiming towards that okay uh, I think that's super, super important to do that. Now, the truth, the reality, all that is super important. But the, the, I see so many people on YouTube, they become rude, rude in the name of truth. And, and that's an, a cop-out. That's an excuse. You need to be respectful. It's the martial path where warrior, if you're a true warrior, you're not rude, you know. You can't be like, well, I tell it like it is. I'm direct, you know. No, you're you're just being an a-hole, okay? So I apologize for bringing up the Balinta Wak name. It's just so predominant. It's so easy to um, use that as a good example. But like I said, it's I see it in all Filipino martial arts styles. It's not that there's anything wrong with the Balinta Wak system. I'm sure there are some deadly Balintawag dudes I do not want to mess with. And that's not what I'm talking about, okay? I'm talking about the people 
they memorize the form and they do the form over and over so they get good at the form and they think that's it and they're looking cool and they're posting that on Instagram and they're spreading that and they go look what I can do you want to do this too and it becomes like a cult and there's just a bunch of people that could do the form but they cannot use it in real life and they're acting like they can and they're acting all high and mighty and feeling good about themselves is a very toxic environment it's and the, and you know they call each other brother and this and it is to me that's a cult it's disturbing um, so stand on your own two feet be independent be an independent thinker and develop develop your your art develop your craft um, you could be solo it that I've been solo for you know many many you know I'm I'm solo and um, you don't need this big old organization making tons of money I mean yeah the, there none of that is needed uh, just for a cult leader yeah you need that because that's what they want they want to be on top of people they want to tell people what to do and and command people and control people and then um, leech off of people you know so uh, I just hope that people will wake up and move away from that so the drills the, dr the drills become problematic even though the drills are there the original idea for a drill is simple it's safer than sparring okay but then you know f doing forms is also safer but then you can't just do forms and you can't just like hit the bag or hit a tire all the time you get to work with another human being but you don't just go full contact and kill each other so then the drills become very very valuable anyone who's trained in MMA or, or something full contact when, and when you start doing drills then you go oh man this is great I'm not busted up as bad I'm not you know incredibly sore and I don't know if I can make it tomorrow to class or you don't have to worry about that as much with drills so drills are great in that in that sense and that's what they're supposed to be but I the problem is it's become so theatrical um, and it's about looking cool now so that that is very very unfortunate the other problem I see in Filipino martial arts kind of the same lines is free free flow okay so you you get good to a certain point and then now you start swinging the sticks around and you start doing free flow um, it's nice as a brain exercise and it's good for relaxing and, and all it has a lot of benefits people are spending way too much time with free flow can you imagine a boxer training that way where okay I'm just gonna train and I'm just gonna mix up the techniques so I'm gonna throw a cross I'm gonna throw a jab jab and I'll throw a cross again I'll throw a hook this time I'll throw a cross and then I'll fall by an uppercut just random stuff just changing it up okay this time I'm gonna parry this time I'm gonna I'm gonna bob and weave and then I'm throwing my cross again and, and just changing it up like that that's great for a beginner 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 okay but beginner trying to put together the moves and getting comfortable with the moves that's great but as a fighter as someone that needs to use it whether it's in the ring or the street or wherever you need to use it no that's no Oh no, you don't train that way. It's not just let's randomize stuff and then flow. No, you're going to get killed. That is not the way you do it. So I hope, I hope, I hope I'm making sense here. I'm not here to bad mouth, okay? I'm trying to get people to wake up, wake up, okay? And, and get away from this illusion so um, be strong be strong be independent and we could still do this respectfully okay um, it, you don't have to go bad mouthing people you don't have to say you know oh you know they they uh, whatever negative stuff you know we that that's not the goal that's not the point you know the point is if you really love the art is to understand the art and make it make it yours truly yours you know and and so that you 
I, I loved what Jean LaBelle said was like, he said something about leg locks. He said, once you learn a leg lock, it's like you'll never be walking a dark alley alone. It's like having two Colt 45s. So he said something like that, you know? And I feel like Filipino martial arts should be, should be that way, that once you learn it and you make it yours, then you'll never walk alone in a dark alley. It's you plus your Filipino martial arts skills. And I love that idea. And it's, it's an art that I love. I don't think it's the best style in the world, which you people go, what? What are you talking about? I know that this is a personal preference and it is my personal preference, but I am not so arrogant to say that it is the best style in the world or even say it's the best style for me because I still feel that's still arrogant. So I will say that I, <laughs> I like it. It's my favorite. That's it. It's just a personal preference. Okay. And there are other magnificent, wonderful styles and every style can be wonderful, you know, it, but there's, Things that you need to do and I'm telling you right now you have to play detective and you have to ask questions not you don't you don't have to go against the style you know you you're asking questions not to undermine authority or something like that no you're asking questions to figure out how can I really use this how can I really make this mine so that's it for now thank you for viewing and take care folks